Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. Today we're going to be tackling the workspace in GameMaker Studio 2. The workspace is where you do all of your work and you can organize it and arrange it any way you want to fit your needs, which allows for really great flexibility and customizability. And we're going to talk about all that today. Some of the things I'm going to tackle are just the basic elements of the workspace, the asset browser, docking and resetting windows, and using quick buttons and shortcuts. So let's go ahead and dive in. The primary aspect of what we're gonna be looking at is the asset browser over here on the right. And that's because this is where everything is stored for your game. Now by default, it's at 100%, which depending on your eyesight or your monitor size might be a little too small. So down here on the right, you can bump this up all the way up to 250%. I like mine at about 150. Find the right size for you that looks good and allows for easily finding all of your assets. And that's because everything in your game is an asset. So we have groups here for some of these already pre-labeled. So we have things like fonts, objects, rooms, sprites, and so on. But what's also really cool about the asset browser is you do not have to keep them inside of those predefined groups. If I wanted everything to do with my player to be in its own group, well, that's fine. I can come over and I can right click, I can create a group and I can name this player. If you right click on another group, it makes it nested inside of that, but I can just drag it all the way out to the left and then it organizes it by name. And then I could start dragging things like the player object, the player sprites, and any player scripts that were important into here. The asset browser is fully customizable and you don't need to put one kind of asset into one specific group. So you can have any kind of asset in any group you want. And there are a lot of ways to add those assets to groups. The first way, which is what I usually use, is I right click and I create whatever kind I want. So if I'm on the path group, I probably want to make a path so I can do that right there. And then another way to make it is actually right clicking on the workspace itself, assets, and then you can create any kind of these. And you'll also notice that each asset you can make comes with a shortcut key. So if you make objects a lot, you might want to memorize alt O because you can just press that and make new objects unlimited. And that's a lot of objects, which we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. The last way of creating assets is right up here with this plus icon. What's unique about this one is that you can make multiples at once. So let's say we need four different fonts for our game. So I'll go and click on font, bump this up to four and click on create. Now I have four different fonts that are ready for me to use and edit. Now they came out here, not in a group because I didn't have any groups selected but I could easily select all of these and just drag them into the font group or whatever folder I wanted them to be in. I don't need all of these, so I'm gonna right click and delete. The asset browser, like everything else in GameMaker, is actually a tabbed window which you can move around. So in GameMaker 1.4, a long time ago, it used to be on the left by default. So if I click on assets and I move it over here, I can dock it on the left and get that retro feeling. Or if you want, you can bring it down to the bottom. I would find it a little bit difficult to use here, but you absolutely can. And down here, we have even more windows that we could move around. I'm gonna go ahead and move the asset browser back here. And then let's take a look at this section down here. We have the output window. So if I press F5 or the triangle up here to run my game, it starts filling up that output with everything the game is doing to get going. If there's an error message, it will also be down there. And when you close it, it tells you that it successfully ran complete and everything went fine. Make sure you look at your output when you're having issues because that's what's gonna tell you what's going on. Then we have search results. So the asset browser is great for finding a specific asset like the player, but what if we wanted to find all of the code in our game? Well, we can press Control Shift F, which it tells you right there, and we could search for player. And now we have every code that has player in its name listed right here. And what's really cool is we can just double click on that and then it brings us right to where it's supposed to be. 
So each one of these is in a different spot. It tells you where it's at, and then you can just go straight to it, and it highlights what you were looking for. This is a really powerful and great feature. Then we have source control, which we're not going to talk about right now. Breakpoints, which I cover much more in depth in, on how to use the debugger. So make sure you check out that video if you want to find out more. Compile errors, which are the errors you get when you try to compile your game. So these will be right down here if you ever need them. And then we have syntax errors, which are sometimes warnings, sometimes errors. These ones down here are just telling that we have only used something once. Not a really big deal unless we're trying to access it as a variable, which we're not because we're able to run the game and have it compile successfully. So take a look at your syntax errors if you want to eliminate all of those. Sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're just warnings, and sometimes they are total errors where if you don't get them fixed, you will not be able to run your game at all. And just like the asset browser, each one of these is a window. So we can move this and dock it anywhere we want, and we can combine it over here if we wanted to. You can have multiple tabs in one area. I find the default setup makes a lot of sense, but you are free to organize it however you want. And then up top here, we have the menu with the quick buttons. So a lot of these are very, very useful and it's good to know what they do and also the shortcuts that go along with them. So starting on the left, we have the start page. If at any time you wanna find your projects to be able to see what you've got going on around here or even start a new one, you can do that here. It opens up a new tab or workspace for you and you can just exit out of that when you're done. Then if you wanna make a new project, you can right here. The, you can open a project you've already got. You can save your project with Control S, something I recommend doing all the time. If you make a change to your project, you'll also notice that a little asterisk appears up here next to the name. If you press Control S, it goes away. It indicates what has not been saved yet. This is for creating an executable really quickly. You can also do that under Build Create Executable. Then we have the debug option, which runs your game in debug mode. Again, check out the debugger video for more information, which is F6. And then we have just running the game at F5, which I definitely recommend memorizing as it'll save you a bunch of time just pressing F5 instead of trying to bring your mouse all the way up here every time. Then we have stopping a project because sometimes your project might get caught in an infinite loop or it might be trying to do something and you just can't quit out of it. Pressing stop will force quit it. Then you can also clean your project if you're having any issues or you've brought in a lot of new assets. Clean it up, make sure it's all running properly. We have the game options here, as well as being able to access them from over here. So both of those are the same thing. You can open up the manual with F1, which is something I highly recommend exploring and looking at more. What's really cool is you can also find any sort of code in your game and press F1 and it will load up the manual to that specific spot in there. So this is the if else, because I had if highlighted and pressed F1 or by clicking this key. Then you can also zoom in, out, recenter it. And finally, you can collapse and expand the dock panels with just one button, F12. You can press it again to bring them back. You also have the arrows on the right, bottom or left, depending on where your docks are at. F12 for me is much faster and much easier to use. We have the compile target up here in the top right. So if we click on this little arrow, this is gonna tell us what we're actually gonna make our game playable on. So we have Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, and HTML5 on my platform. There are more modules you can get, such as for console exports, like the Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. You can buy those at yoyogames.com, and they'll show up right here as soon as you purchase them, and you can change the outputs and where it's going. By default, it chooses the one that makes the most sense. I'm on a Windows machine, and so it defaults to Windows. If I was on a Mac, I could export it to a Mac. If I wanted to make an internet game that can run in the browser, HTML5 is how I want to do that. Once you select that, you can just come up here to build and create executable like we talked about earlier. The last thing I'll mention is that you can have multiple workspaces open and a workspace can be a code in and of itself. So you can see here we have workspace one and workspace two. So if we wanted to rename these, you can. If we wanted to have everything about the player open on workspace player, that would make a lot of sense. And then we can work inside of here and this workspace can be for something else. 
If you wanted to bring all of the code for a player into a workspace that's full screen, you can open up each one and then you can press full screen right here and it becomes its own workspace and each of the events is a tab inside of that workspace. This is how I prefer to work most of the time as it gives me the most screen real estate. But when you're starting out, it might be easier to just have them open right here. If you do make something full screen and you try to click on that event again, it'll take you right back to that workspace. And at any time, if you make a mistake or you get rid of something that you think you need, you can click on layouts and you can reset the layout. It'll delete everything and put everything back to the way it originally was. And this is a great thing that you can use if you just get confused or you're trying to follow along on a tutorial and you've got yours set up in a different way and you just can't find something. You can also do that inside of the room. You can click on room reset windows on current desktop to reset everything back to the way it was. And that covers all the basic navigation and the way to use workspaces in Game Maker Studio 2. Find the way that works best for you, customize it, move things around, figure out how you make games best, and then set it up that way. When you're all done, you can click layout, save layout, and then it'll be there for you whenever you need it. And that's all I wanted to cover. Thanks for joining me. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.